Greetings, students, and welcome to this special domestic edition of The Professor Travel. I am your host, The Professor Travel, coming to you from Orange County, California. This is the website, the vlog, and the podcast that you come to in order to learn more about different travel destinations. This is where we come as a community in order to discuss more. Hopefully, this will inspire you to travel more and ultimately to enjoy life more. Now, you can reach me at a variety of different social media outlets, of course, starting with my website, which is at theprofessortravel.com. On YouTube, on Facebook, and now on TikTok, you can reach me at theprofessortravel. If you're an Instagrammer, you can find me there at the underscore professor underscore travel. If you're a Twitter or er, 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 you can find me on Twitter at theprofessortr1. And then finally, if you're a blogger, you can find me on Blogspot at theprofessortravel.blogspot.com. Today, I have a visiting professor with me. Um, Brian Krollinger Seals is visiting from the wonderful state of South Carolina. How are you doing, Brian? Hey, doing good. Hi, how are you doing? <laughs> I'm doing great. Now, before we get into talking a little bit about you, I, I love this picture. And for those of you who are listening on the podcast, you can absolutely come over to the YouTube channel in order to see this. But there is a wonderful picture of you with a couple of these elephants. Talk to me a little bit about this. When was this and where are you? Oh, this was about uh, five years ago. Um, that is me. And on the right is my spouse. And uh, he was uh, staying in Chiang Mai, Thailand for a while. And uh, I came to visit for a few weeks and we went to the elephant sanctuary. It's really kind of interesting because they rescued these elephants that were being used for tourism and, you know, ride, riding them and stuff like that. They, they, they just come from really kind of depressing backgrounds and these sanctuaries rescue them and how they take care of them and fund it is by allowing tourists to come and meet with them and, and interact with them. It's really cool. That's a great thing. And you know, you are actually the third person I have interviewed specifically on Chiang Mai and specifically about the elephant sanctuaries. It just seems like a really amazing cause. And I think that's a great way to, you know, use your influence in order to be able to try and help out with these amazing, amazing locations. It's, they seem so happy with you guys there. And they're just, it's amazing because they're so huge, yet they're so gentle. They're just amazing. Oh, that's fantastic. Well, <laughs> To, to talk a little bit about yourself and your background. Now, we've known each other for, gosh, 20 years now, I think, something like that. Um, <laughs> it's been a while. <laughs> um, but uh, we both met in higher education. Uh, but uh, just, so we, uh, just so my viewers can know a little bit about you, can you maybe talk a little bit about your credentials, uh, maybe something in either education or places that you've traveled? Sure. Well, first of all, uh, I come from a military family. So I spent a few years of my childhood in South Carolina. That's how I circled around and came back to this later in life. Um, but <clears throat> I have worked with the, the University of Phoenix with you mm -hmm. uh, for quite a while, 10 years, I think. And uh, I went into real estate so I could have a little more freedom and flexibility <laughs> is great. That's how I got into travel. <laughs> so um, having that flexibility. And so I've just been, I mean, I work a lot, but travel whenever we can. So where, where are some of the favorite places that you've been to? Uh, uh, Germany, uh, Thailand, of course. Thailand is the all-time favorite. Um, and uh, I think that's it, pretty much Thailand is my favorite. Germany would be my second favorite. Most, most else has been domestic, your typical things like, you know, Vegas and, you know, different DC and different things like that. I love going to DC. There's so many interesting things to see and do there. Yeah. And you do a, you did a wonderful train trip. I saw a picture of it on your Facebook, um, starting actually from South Carolina, going all the way to DC on the East coast. Is that correct? We did. Um, my mom won't fly and I wanted to take her to DC to her and her sister to kind of check things out. And uh, so the train was our next solution because I hate car trips. I just don't do them. And it was great. You know, you got the dining car, you've got Wi-Fi, you, the chairs are huge. You can spread out, relax. <laughs> it's only about an hour longer than, than it would have by car. The only thing that got to me was that constant whistle. I couldn't get that whistle out of my <laughs> That's why you have those headphones that you can do noise cancellation now. Because <laughs> every time we 
you don't get near a crossing, that horn goes off and off. That was the only thing that bothered me about it, but it was a great trip. Awesome. Well, the nature of our conversation today is about the wonderful state that you live in, which is South Carolina. So I know virtually nothing about South Carolina. So maybe you can share some of your incredible knowledge with me about, about the state you live in. Well, I'll try. <laughs> we go back a long, long way in South Carolina. Um, uh, there were people trying to settle in the 1500s, uh, Spanish and French uh, settlers, but the first permanent uh, settlement uh, was in 1670, right near Charleston. Okay. Um, and uh, I don't know if people know this or not, but Charles, I mean, Carolina used to be one, not north and south. And yeah. Carolina decided, South Carolina kind of has a thing about relationships. They're not real good. So they wanted to leave North Carolina. <laughs> so they did so in 1729. Okay. <clears throat> uh, South Carolina was important during the Revolutionary War. There were a few important battles uh, in the state. Um, one notable one was uh, Kings Mountain. Uh, but there's there there was a lot of revolutionary war activity um in in the state and in charleston and in general uh so we became a state in 17 or maybe it was a colony back then in 1788 mm -hmm. and uh because we have relationship issues we it would be a good idea to to leave the union so south carolina was one of the first states to to break away and the first shot of the civil war was on fort sumter which sits right off of the coast from charleston so that didn't work out either and so we reunited of course and uh that's kind of our history you know civil war then you go from civil war reconstruction into jim crow and you know all that kind of stuff so that's that's basically a short 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 version of our long history <laughs> it is a little complicated especially with all of the civil rights issues that stem from the south i know that you guys also had a, a u.s president i think it was in 1829 i think andrew jackson uh, became president, and I think. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think he came from South Carolina as well. I, if I'm if I'm correct on that, I'm not sure. I, I <laughs> well, it's interesting that you say that because North Carolina claims him, and South Carolina claims him. <laughs> <laughs> he was he was actually born sort of on a on a little border area, so he considered himself to be from South Carolina. Okay, but I think we get to claim him fair and square. Okay. And then I know, obviously, you guys have had hurricane issues, especially in the, the late 1900s, uh, 1989, Hurricane Hugo was huge, and that like devastated a lot of South Carolina. That was pretty big. Um, yeah. And then I think in 2000, you guys finally got through with taking the Confederate flag off of the off of the state flag, you know, and just getting rid I'm of glad, that. Glad you mentioned that. Yes, in 2000, the, the Confederate flag was officially removed from the state state capital where where they would fly it under the American flag. And so that was actually, I don't know if you remember, that was in the news. I would lived in California at the time and it was news and stuff. And so that, that was a big defining moment, I think. And I would be remiss if I didn't mention that there were actually, before the Spanish settlers there, there were Native American tribes there, the Cherokee were there, as well as the, um, I think it's the Cataba, uh, Cataba, Catab, Catabwa. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm trying to remember the name of it, but uh, there's a there's a lot of different there's a lot of small uh, tribes. Uh, I, I I apologize to any member of the tribe that I I'm not meaning to offend by not getting the name correct, so I apologize for that. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> then, in terms of geography, talk to me a little bit about what states are are in your area. What other states border the area? Obviously, you know North Carolina is there, but what other states are in your general area? Right. So, yeah, obviously North Carolina to the north, and then Georgia to the south, um, and to the east. It's really funny because we should be touching 
Tennessee, but Georgia has a little piece that kind of comes over us, so we, we don't have the border with Tennessee, but we almost do. <laughs> Georgia, Georgia gently hugs you. That's what it is. <laughs> yeah, we're just, yeah, we're just surrounded by those two, and we're just kind of enveloped there on the coast. Fantastic. Now, talk to me about the weather. Um, obviously, you've had the opportunity to live with me in California. So mm -hmm. you know that we live in a desert community here in California. It usually tends to be dry. And I am, based on all my research, it seems to be very humid uh, in South Carolina at various different times of the year. Talk to me a little bit about the seasons that you got there and what the weather is like. Yeah, well, one of the reasons, because uh, because yes, I've lived in Southern California a long time, so to me, winter had to be mild. So uh, here in South Carolina, we sort of have like three distinct regions within the state. We've got the coastal area that we call the Low Country. We've got the middle area, which we call the Midlands, and then we've got uh, the uh, northern part of the state which we call just the upstate. Now, so the mild weather is down on the coastal part. And then as you go to the Midlands, the weather and the seasons are more distinct and the seas seasons are more severe. And of course, in the North, you have more opportunity for snow and things like that. But summertime is heat and humidity pretty much everywhere. <laughs> What about in terms of extreme temperature or extreme climate differences? How often do you guys get hurricanes in your area? Well, we're lucky because of, of where Charleston is situated on the coast. Um, we're supposed to get a major hurricane like every 20, 30 years, they say. So we're kind of due after Hugo. Yeah. Um, we get a lot of close calls, but we don't. I've been here 16 years and we've never had a direct hit yet. We've never had to evacuate, but we've had to come close a few times. Um, they'll tend to hit Wilmington and the Outer Banks of North Carolina okay. before. So, but we so, kind of, get so that kind of absorbs the impact and kind of pushes it away from you guys. Yeah. Perfect. What about in terms of tornadoes or anything like that? Do you guys get those at all or no? We get many tornadoes sometimes. Uh, we, we're prone to a lot of afternoon thunder shower activity. And sometimes we pretty regularly can get some very, very heavy cells that can spawn tornadoes and things. But it's not like Tornado Alley. It's much more mild than that. Usually if a tornado hits, it's not a huge one. It, it'll knock down a few trees and you know go away. Uh, so we do get them, but it's not a huge problem here. So in terms of extreme weather conditions, there's really not that much to worry about. You know, it's very rare that you guys get any major hurricanes or tornadoes or anything like that. It's not significant. No, no, um, not really. The tornado threat, I mean, it's there and it worries us a little bit every year, but we haven't had any major devastating activity for a long, long time. Um, we're also due for an earthquake. A lot of people don't know there's a fault that runs through Charleston, South Carolina. And, oh, I, didn't, uh, I did not know that. Yeah, they had a major earthquake in the 1800s. Sorry, I got to plug in. I'm going to be losing power here. That's okay. Well, uh, yeah, in the, uh, in the 1800s, there was a major earthquake and it destroyed a lot of the buildings in Charleston. It was pretty bad. And they say we're due for that one too, but you know how that is. <laughs> well, yeah, I live in California. Obviously we, <laughs> we've been expecting the big one for the last 35, 40 years, something like that. So. Yeah. yeah. But in, in the majority of the state in the Midlands and the Uplands, I mean, they don't even really have to worry about hurricanes. It's just coastal that has to worry about that. So no, there's really not a lot of weather drama in South Carolina. That's cool. All right. Well, let's break into some culture then, shall we? Um, no. So in terms of the uh, religion within the area, the, there is a predominant religion in South Carolina, and that tends to be Southern Baptist. Would you agree with that? Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, that and um, yeah, Southern Baptist and Protestants, those are the biggies here. Okay. Then in terms of art within your area, and when I think about art, I think about everything from 
literature, to um, fine arts, to acting, singing, um, just some people that I happened to come across. Uh, Bill Murray uh, is from mm -hmm. South Carolina. The Godfather of Soul, James Brown is from there. Of course, Black Panther, Chadwick Boseman, amazing actor, taken way too early. Uh, he was from there. Stephen Colbert um, is from there as well. Uh, you said there's also someone that's kind of local to your area that's a famous person as well, correct? Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, Darius Rucker from Hootie and the Blowfish. <laughs> that's awesome. Or Born and raised here, still lives here. <laughs> That's awesome. He's, um, he's, and, a, he's a big promoter in the area. Okay, fantastic. Uh, is there anybody else that I'm missing in terms of artists or even fine um, artists? I don't know uh, if this, have you heard of Pat Conroy, the author? I have not, but tell me a little bit about Pat. Uh, he wrote The Great Santini. He wrote The Prince of Tide. Um, those were his those were his biggest and of course both of those movies both of those books were turned into movies that were actually shot in south carolina he was oh, cool. yeah he was big around here yeah he passed away back in 2016 but he was a big big figure around here okay wonderful okay um and in terms of language uh there's not any predominant language other than the english language that's in your area would you agree with that Yes, I would agree with that, with one minor exception. I wanted exactly. to talk. Uh, English is our predominant language, but because of our history, um, there's a lot of uh, outer, outer islands, coastal areas where people couldn't exactly interact with a lot of other people. So there's, there's a language called Gala, which most people used to just call consider it gibberish, but it's actually like a, a Creole English language. And they do have some of their own words mixed with English. And if you hear somebody speaking it, you you can't understand it if you don't speak. Yeah. Um, I've been around people that do that, that that do speak it. It's really interesting. Um, I'll give you an example. The word kumbaya is gala. Oh, From wow. The, yeah. It means kumbaya, it means come to me. That makes perfect sense. And you think about kumbaya. Right? Yeah, exactly. Come to me, my lord, come to me. Yeah. yeah. So it, it it's it's a little interesting subculture. Now, most people don't speak it. It's a very, very native limited thing but they're trying to keep that culture alive and trying to keep that language alive that's fantastic i'm glad that they're working for a preservation of it that's amazing yeah. so yeah. good job on that yeah. now can we can we break into my favorite subject which is food um <laughs> i'm kind of a foodie most of my people know it they've seen my profile so <laughs> um but you know some things that i happen to notice when i'm doing research on the various different foods in south carolina um, you know, barbecue and Southern food are really big there. Boiled peanuts appears to be a thing there. Um, that's another thing as well. Um, anything that I'm happening to miss, you know, what, what, what do you typically eat over there? Um, a couple of things that I discovered when I moved here that are regional favorites. Uh, one is called Frogmore Stew. Um, there are no frogs in Frogmore Stew. <laughs> <laughs> It's named that because it was it was created in a little coastal town called Frogmore. So, uh, but it's basically, or they call it a low country boil. It's you just throw potatoes and corn and and shrimp and whatever seafood you have, and you kind of cook it over like a hot, you know, like foil boil it and cover it with foil and stuff and then when you serve it you just take newspaper spread it out on the paper and you just kind of spread all the contents out and everybody grabs stuff so it's it's kind of a fun thing uh another kind of specialty around here is uh shrimp and grits hmm. uh, yeah there's always controversy about who has the best shrimp and grits so that's always fun love shrimp and grits <laughs> Don't that's awesome up boiled peanuts though <laughs> <laughs> you are not a fan of boiled peanuts but i mean it is a delicacy in your area it is it's 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 
I don't know if it's official, but at least unofficially, it's the state snack. And I think it is officially too. They take it very seriously. <laughs> How do they vary it? You said they sometimes spice it a little bit or? Yeah, uh, they can put different seasonings in there. Sometimes they'll make like really hot, spicy boiled peanuts or, you know, diff just different, um, different flavorings and stuff to give it a little more character. I find it ironic because I like peanut butter, but the thought of a boiled peanut doesn't really do it for me. No, I, I, I tried. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> more, more power to the ones that love it. More for them. Awesome. All right. I would be remiss if I didn't mention sports and recreation in your area. Obviously, uh, Carolina Panthers, big sports team. Uh, they've, they've made it a couple of times, I believe. Um, and then, of course, uh, University of South Carolina, the Gamecocks, have their rivalry with uh, the Clinton Tigers. Um, right. But apart from that, any other major sports that I'm forgetting or not mentioning that come to mind for you? Well, we don't really have any professional sports around here. It's mostly college in our state. Uh, golf is I'm very big here. I mean, golf is like the thing. This is Carolina is just golf. And uh, golf and football, basically. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. And then were there any state holidays for South Carolina that I'm missing? I, I didn't see any. You know, I have not run across any in the time that I've lived here, so I Googled it and I couldn't find any. So I have to say no, nothing that I know of. I'm sure a local that's, that's family goes back three years might know of something, but <laughs> nothing that celebrate on a major scale. You know, I was going to ask, are there any um, like fruit or vegetable festivals or state fairs or anything that's like really big that comes down to your area? Um, well, we have the state fair, kind of like every, it's pretty, you know, kind of like every state fair. Um, there's a lot of, uh, <clears throat> a lot of, um, what do you call it? Festivals, like they'll have a, a restaurant festival or uh, where they'll get different groups together to highlight their foods mm. and stuff like that. Um, Charleston, if you're a foodie, uh, you would love. I, I, I have to go then. <laughs> it's my all thing. about. Yeah, but no, nothing really other than that. Okay. Oh, we do have. Um, well, I could mention maybe this would be a good place to mention the Spoleto Festival. That's a very. I'm um, sorry. The what? The what festival? It's called the Spoleto Festival. Um, it's once a year. It's a big event here. Um, they have a lot of. Um, operas and plays and different kinds of things like that art displays and things of that nature and it runs for a couple of weeks and it, it's become quite a quite a big thing in charleston excellent people, Thank you. Yeah, a lot of people come from like all over way far away to the spoleto festival sounds interesting mm -hmm. thank you for sharing that now, the population of your state is 5.2 million people or around that, correct? Yep. Okay. And I noticed on the map here, and again, for those that are listening on the podcast, you can come over to the YouTube channel in order to get a little bit of a sense of what I'm talking about. There are three major population centers I'm seeing here. I'm going to highlight a couple of them, and maybe you can share with me, to the best of your knowledge, what these locations are. Do you see this location I'm circling right now? That would be down where I am. That would be Charleston area. Okay, then what is here in the center of the state? That should be Columbia, the state capital. Okay, and then as we get a little bit further north, there's a few spread out population centers here. That would be Greenville, Spartanburg area. That's where BMW is. And um, right to the north of that, mm -hmm. if you cross the border, is Charlotte. Oh, okay. Is South Carolina, but... So it's, it's, so it's kind of like... So people might live in South Carolina, but then travel to North Carolina in order to work or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Very interesting. All mm -hmm. right. And speaking of BMW also, they're a big employer that's down in your area, but so is like Michelin, Cryovac, Sunoco, uh, Medical uh, University of South Carolina, and of course, Red Cross and Blue Shield of South Carolina. Um, mm -hmm. What are some other major companies or major employers that are in your area? Do you happen to know of any? Yes, um, a big one is Boeing. Mm. They moved here 
I think about 10, 12 years ago to build the, uh, the Dreamliner or the Dream, they have the Dreamliner. So they have a huge facility over by the uh, airport, by the Charleston airport. Um, Daimler is here. Mm. They build, uh, they build the Sprinter vans for, um, for um, FedEx and, you know, other delivery companies. So they just produce a lot of vans. Um, and Volvo has a big plant here. And so they build a lot of cars uh, at the Volvo plant. And most of that BMW, Volvo uh, are mostly exported. They just export a ton of these things out of the port of Charleston. And then of course, Daimler too. You have a lot of non-American car companies that are in your area, but it's, it's amazing that they get so much work in that area. I'm, I'm impressed. Yeah, yeah, it is. I I don't know how manufacturing really became such a thing here, but manufacturing is is quite a quite a thing in the in the South Carolina area now. Excellent. Yep. Well, then let's talk about travel and transportation in your area. You are probably mm-hmm. familiar with how the roads are in your area. Compared to comparing them to say Southern California where we lived, how do you rate the roads? Um they're on they're on the poor side we have we have some infrastructure issues for sure uh we have some pretty rough roads uh i would compare it to maybe some of the rougher streets in la sometimes (laughs) Um, so it's 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 passable i wouldn't say our infrastructure is necessarily dangerous, but it can be a little rough. And I notice when I drive to Atlanta, as soon as I cross the state line, the roads just- (laughs) It's like smooth as silk. There you go. Yeah, uh, you could tell tell without looking at a sign that you just crossed the state line. (laughs) Not as bumpy. Okay. Um, What about as far as major airports that are in your area? Uh, Charleston Airport is the largest airport in the state. And then Columbia has, has a, decent size airport. And then of course, in the uh, Northern area, uh, Greenville has an airport. So those are the three major airports. Um, Oh no, I'm forgetting one, Myrtle Beach also. Mm. So we have four decent size airports, Charleston being the largest uh, with the most uh, people going through it. Is Charleston an international airport or is that more of a regional airport? It is an international airport. Okay, cool. I wasn't sure, but I wanted to just double check. Here's something exciting. Until this year, you could not fly from Charleston to the West Coast without stopping somewhere. JetBlue has a nonstop from Charleston to Los Angeles. Oh, finally. <laughs> it is so awesome. I, I've once, great is not to have to you know, fly to a different city and change planes and, you know, take eight or nine hours and instead it takes like five. So I was so when they did that. (laughs) That's awesome. Congratulations on that. Uh, What about now, obviously you've, you've done the Amtrak from your, from, from where you're at um, along the East coast, but it it does go all the way up the East coast. Does it not? Yeah. All the way up the Eastern seaboard. Mm -hmm. Can you also get down to say Florida from there as well? Uh, I don't believe they have a southern route. I don't know how far south it goes. I don't think it goes that far south, though. I'm not sure on that. Okay, not a problem. And then, in terms of tourism, what are what are some? Oh, hey, there you go. <laughs> My stand fell. Okay, there you go. I can see you now. Hi. Okay. Um, <laughs> as far as tourism in your area goes. Mm-hmm. What are some major attractions uh, in terms of, you know, is there an, any amusement parks? Are there uh, major shopping districts? What would you recommend? Okay, well, the younger the younger group would want to go to Myrtle Beach. You know, they've got some attractions there, and of course, they've got the beach. It's kind of like the young hip place to go hang out. Um, you know, just to kind of eat, play mini golf, and do kind of. <laughs> like that. Uh, <clears throat> Charleston is a big tourist area. The thing for Charleston is um, history, mm-hmm. architecture, 
and food. Um, we have actually some of the finest uh, restaurants around. It's known for fine dining. Uh, in fact, the Art Institute had a culinary school down there for a while. I actually worked at the Art Institute for a bit. And you wouldn't believe the things that they turned out. And they put that school down there because they needed very well-trained chefs for these high-end restaurants and stuff. So Charleston's uh, got some very, uh, very good eateries. And not only high-end, there's a lot of good food, you know, just your basic fried fish and chips and stuff like that. You know, every, everything in between. <laughs> You were, you were not joking when you said that you really need to be kind of a foodie in order to live in that area. It, it, it is a foodie town. And then, of course, um, golf is the other thing that attracts a lot of tourism. And they'll tend to go down to like uh, Hilton Head Island and places like that for the for the golfing. Um, Midlands and the and the um, upstate. There's really nothing there for tourism. Most of it is down here in the low country along the coast. Uh, there is a, a amusement park called Carowinds, which is kind of on the North Carolina, South Carolina border. That would be the closest true amusement park that we have. Okay. Um, yeah. But you also have, if I'm remembering correctly, and I think you guys, you guys do have a cruise port like if, if like I, if I wanted to take a cruise to say the Caribbean or the Bahamas, I think you guys do have a cruise port there, correct? We do. We have a cruise terminal. Um, we have a huge shipping port, and um, right there with it is uh, the the cruise ship terminal. Um, and they actually started allowing more more ships in there to kind of dock and stay a while and. Uh, it caused a lot of controversy, but yeah, you can take a cruise. You can take a cruise out of Charleston to the Bahamas and everywhere. So, yeah. You ever been? I have not. Okay, I just was, I wanted to know if you had or had not because I would I would love to get a recommendation in order to see how that see how that whole thing goes from your location. Can't help you with that one. That's okay. Um, now the government in the state, I believe, is primarily conservative as well, uh, both on the federal level and on the state level. Except when you reach the major cities, in which case it tends to be a little bit more uh, liberal, depending on the size of the cities. Am I right on that? Yep, that is exactly correct. Uh huh. And uh, <clears throat> Charleston is probably the most liberal city you're going to find here, and it's, it's. I mean, it's still somewhat conservative but it's about as it's about as liberal as you're going to find around here uh, <laughs> the rest of it is pretty conservative but you know people are generally just pretty kind and they don't seem to be too judgmental and everything like that so everybody seems to get along pretty well um it's just a conservative state well let me ask you a question kind of off the books here because it was one that we didn't discuss but i'm kind of curious um the whole concept of Southern hospitality, um, I, you know, growing up in Southern California, I, it's, it's a world removed from the South. So I don't know that much. Is it something that's like still in effect? Would you say, is it still something that's prevalent to your area or is it something that is kind of, an, kind of like a bygone type era type thing? I'm kind of curious. I'd have to say that's kind of a bygone type of a thing. Okay. Uh, uh, our, our area, like many places, has been kind of watered down with different cultures, people moving in from different places and stuff like that. Um, I think a lot of us try to carry that tradition. Like, I'll wave at my neighbors when I'm passing by. Most of them will wave and smile back. Some will not make eye contact. So I don't. But uh, Southern hospitality, in, as far as tourism and when you go to restaurants and hotels and stuff, uh, You'll find it there, of course. Um, you know, they, they're just very welcoming and very helpful people. Wonderful. Now, when I was doing research on some of the resources in your area, I was coming up with things like, in terms of natural resources, I was coming up with things like date palms and rice. But you also mentioned another type of major resource that's in your area, and that was lumber, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's uh, there's a lot of lumber mills here. They uh, they farm lumber here. You know, they'll they'll cut down the trees and then they'll plant new trees. And they've got they've always got 
you know, rotating acreage out in the middle of nowhere. And so they do, uh, we, there's a lot of lumber comes from this area. Excellent. All right. And then in terms of education, you have a couple of colleges that have been there for many, many, many years. Obviously, the ones that initially come to mind, University of South Carolina has been there since 1801. Uh, South Carolina State's been there since the late 1800s, 1896. And then, of course, the Citadel, uh, which has been there, you know, and is a major military installation, has been there mm -hmm. as well. Um, other colleges, uh, you know, uh, Clinton, obviously, is one that comes to mind. Uh, any other major colleges that you can think of that are prevalent in South Carolina? Uh, MUSC uh, Medical, um, they're, they're very big and they have a great reputation. Um, there's an older college in downtown Charleston. It's just the, um, it's just the College of Charleston, but it's, it's very popular. Um, <clears throat> It's nice because it's in a lot of old historical buildings and things like that. So it has their campus has a lot of character to it. But other than that, I think that pretty much covers it. Okay. And then in terms of the literacy rate, um, it, it not really where we want it to be, but it's been improving. It seems over the last several years. Correct. Yeah, that's right. It's about eighty-five percent right now, which is um, not bad. I mean, compared to other countries, you know, it's it's fantastic. But right. Um, it started like like when we started tracking it in the 1960s i think it was somewhere like even in the 70s it was like the 65 65 yeah. yeah yeah like 65 and then it went up you know to the 70s now we're up to 85 so we're making progress uh our education system i mean If you're move, nobody's going to move here for the education system. Let me put it that way. Um, we're kind of ranked like 48th in the nation, um, and so they're you know they're working on it. There's some good schools here. There's some good private schools and things like that. But overall, um, it's it's pretty low. Okay. What about in terms of safety and security? Obviously, when I think of major foreign and domestic terrorism threats. Unless you really count something like this, the start of the Civil War, uh, which is obviously a major <laughs> terrorism act. Um, Little bit. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, but apart from that, I don't think of any major, you know, modern terrorism threats that come through South Carolina. Anything that you've thought of or you've heard of? No, there's really not any terrorist uh, threats. There was a there was a prison where they were talking about, you know. Uh, locking up some of the people from Guantanamo and we were worried about that. Um, but if they did it, they kept it very hush hush because nobody's talking about it anymore. I don't think they know what goes on in that prison. There's probably some very high level terrorists over there. Well, it's, a su it, it's a super max, right? It is. Yeah. Okay. They're not getting, they're not getting, and they don't want anyone to know where they are or who they are for sure. Probably wise. Um, we and have, then, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. We have, yeah, we have a big military presence here. So, I mean, in, unless a military base would be a target or something like that, but I don't think those typically are, you know, domestically anyway. So I, uh, we don't really have any major threats to worry about on that front. Okay. And in terms of major crimes in your area, I mean, obviously, whenever you're traveling, you want to use your, you want to use your brain. You don't want to go down a dark alley at night or whatever you know in in in, in any city let alone a major city uh but right. i think for the most part the crime statistics in south carolina are pretty much normal i mean i don't think there's any major like, yeah, it, serial killers we, or anything crazy like that right we have the same we, we have the same typical problems as a lot of states um in the rural areas for some reason they just tend to have a lot of drug problems um but not a lot of violence surrounding it or anything like that. There's, it's just a thing. Uh, and then of course, in the cities, you know, you've got your, your, um, your poorer areas where there's high crime and, and, uh, but that's pretty much any city, like you were saying, there's going to be elements of, of crime. It's a fairly safe city. You just have to get, yeah, you really do have to watch yourself, but it's a fairly safe area. Perfect. And, and the state of South Carolina in general is safe. I'm speaking, you know, about the, about the urban centers. 
Excellent. Well, before we get going, I do want to ask you one thing. Well, so let's say, again, to round out <laughs> that, that last question and to, and to bring up the conversation here into something a little bit more positive. Let's say I had a round trip ticket to go to South Carolina. How would you sell me on that in just like a quick one minute blurb? Like, talk to me. What, why would I want to visit you apart from visiting you? Yeah, well, there's a lot of reasons. Um, the first thing I would say is uh, you, you got to come and hit downtown Charleston because there's a lot of history. There's some fascinating architecture. There's churches that are 250 years old, homes that are, you know, 300 years old. Um, some of them you can go into. Um, you'll get tours. They'll give you the stories behind them. Um, it's a good walking city. So if you're into history and architecture, you definitely want to hit downtown Charleston. His story uh, deeper, uh, 30 minutes out of Charleston, we have several um, plantations, you know, that they used to grow, you know, rice and things like that. A lot of people don't know that rice was a big crop here back in the slave days. Um, and you can tour those and you can learn about what life was like there. You can still see the original buildings. You can go into some of them and take, just learned all kinds of stuff about history. Um, the other thing I wanna say is we just have beautiful, um, just beautiful land. We have a lot of forests and rivers and lakes. So if you're into sporting, uh, you can go kayaking camping is great there's a lot of outdoor activities you can do too and of course the food is great <laughs> of course and <laughs> if i want to take a cruise i can go of course out of the port of charleston so that was another one too there you go so I'll have, to, I'll have to i'll have to stop by and, and see you before I head on a cruise from there to the caribbean so <laughs> there's a lot of really good reasons to visit charleston when i first came to charleston i was just going through on my way to savannah because i thought savannah was the bomb mm -hmm. and i actually wished i had spent more time in charleston so the next time i came back and spent time in charleston there's just a lot to see and do and it's awesome. beautiful yeah. Well, Brian, I wanted to thank you very much. I know we've been trying to get together for a while, and I really appreciate you taking the time to speak to myself, my students. I, I've learned a lot today, so I really appreciate you taking the time to do that. So thank you so much. Well, good. It was fun. I enjoyed it. Awesome. Thank you. And for my students that are out there, if you have any questions or comments you'd like to share with me, you can certainly send them to scott at theprofessortravel.com. Again, Brian, thank you so much. Goodbye, Professor. <laughs> no problem. Now, for my students that are on the podcast here, or on the vlog, I specifically say, uh, if you want to be notified when new videos are going up, click that bell icon right above us. If you are, or if you've not yet subscribed to the channel, you certainly can. Please feel free to hit the subscribe button. If you like this content and you would like to receive more of it, give a thumbs up. We'd really appreciate that. And of course, if you're on the podcast, and you would like to share your opinion with us, we, all, we always welcome that. So thank you so much for giving us the feedback on that. So until next time, my name is Scott. I am the Professor Travel and make every day a travel adventure. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye now.